A big topic in this course is how the value of a function changes uh, as its input changes. The rates of change or derivatives are about half of what this course is about. And um, we want to be a little bit more precise uh, than you may have been uh, before you came to university. And um, the proper definition, uh, in order to be able to talk about rates of changes of functions, we need to be able to define functions properly. And the definition of a function uh, involves the notion of a set. So we're gonna cover just enough about sets uh, to, uh, for, for, our, for our purposes. Okay, so I'm going to share the screen with you, and we're going to start our discussion about sets. Okay, so these are a base or primitive notion in mathematics, and we don't define exactly what a set is. I hope that uh, we'll have the same understanding of a set once this uh, lecture is over. Um, intuitively, a set is a collection of elements. Um, so we're going to do a few examples and some very simple properties of sets. So one example of a set, the set S consists of the elements a heart, diamond, banana. This set S has been defined by listing its elements. Now, the order in which we listed the elements doesn't matter. So the set which consists of diamond one banana is considered to be the same as the set which consists of one diamond banana. The order of the elements within the list of the set elements does not matter. Okay, another example of a set is the set S of all students registered in Math 101 this semester. Okay, so this is defined. This set S, uh, un, in, instead of listing its elements, which would be a very long list, um, it's defined by giving a proper common, uh, a property which is common to all elements of the set. Okay. That property has to be well defined. Um, and that means that in principle, anything that we can think of belongs to the set or it does not belong to the set. So for example, this is not a set. The set of all good Bollywood movies. It's not a set because um, it isn't well defined what a good movie is. We're mostly, we are in this course, mostly going to be dealing with sets of real numbers and particularly intervals of real numbers. <clears throat> so some examples uh, using and to familiarize you with some notations that are going to come up in the rest of the course. So the first example is read this way. X is an element, all those x, which are elements of the real numbers, such that x is greater than 5. Okay, so the real numbers whose square is greater than 5. Uh, 5 comma 7, using round brackets, means that interval on the real number line, such that x lies between 5 and 7, all the real numbers between 5 and 7, so not including 5, and not including seven. Uh, if I use, if I write five comma seven with um, a square bracket next to the five and a round bracket next to the seven, that means the real numbers between five and seven. And this time we include five and we do not include seven. So round brackets mean we are not including this number, and square brackets mean we are including this number. 
So if I write five comma seven with first a round bracket and then a square bracket, then that means those real numbers which lie between five and seven, not including five and including seven. And if I have five comma seven and two square brackets, that means the numbers between five and seven, which include five and which also include seven. Okay, that first example with uh, two round brackets is called an open interval. And the second example with two square brackets is called a closed interval. Okay, some other important sets of numbers that we are going to see in this course uh, written in this way. R means the real numbers. Q means the rational numbers all numbers which can be written as fractions with uh, integers in the numerator and the denominator. Uh, Z stands for the integers. And if I write Z plus, that means the positive integers. Okay, a couple of more notations. Um, a is an element of A, it will be written like this. So that means that small a is in the set, capital A. The empty set or the null set is the set with no elements. Uh, it can be written in two ways. One way is to write curly brackets with nothing else inside the brackets. And the other way is this uh, Norwegian letter. Okay. We can create uh, new sets out of old sets by taking the cross product or their Cartesian product. So A cross B consists of ordered pairs A comma B such that A is in A and B is in B. You already have an example of this that you've used before, the xy plane. Okay, that's r cross r, or the Cartesian product of r with itself. So an example of a Cartesian product of two sets, <coughs> let s be the set with the elements diamond, banana, let t be the set with elements one and two, then the Cartesian product of S with T is the set of ordered pairs diamond 1, diamond 2, banana 1, banana 2. We also need the notion of a subset. Mostly we are going to be dealing with either the real numbers or subsets of the real numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Set A is a subset of a set B if every element of A is in B, and we use this notation, which is read as A is a subset of B. So some examples, <clears throat> the empty set or the null set is considered to be a subset of all sets A. The set A is a subset of the set A because every element of A is in A. <clears throat> the set consisting of diamond is a subset of the set with elements diamond, banana, and the rational numbers are considered to be a subset of the real numbers. Okay, so just a little bit about sets so that we can go on to talk about functions. <clears throat>